Yeah. 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 Jim Kibblesis, Ariel. Uh, question on resolution 150. Um, this is the one with uh, writing the letter to the governor about the recycle. I have a number of questions, and I guess I'm, I'm not quite organized. I mean, so the questions may be in random type things. Um, is it illegal? for the governor to take this money out of the fund? I don't know if it's legal to do it. Because the way, the way it's stated, it says, you know, um, the state law specifies that no less than 60% of the proceeds of these funds must be returned. I mean, you know, so like, is this a surplus amount of money, the 21 million point six? Um, I don't know, Jim. I don't know. Okay. My assumption is because the league is asking us to approve the resolution, that they're concerned that they have a right, the state may have a right to take this money. Therefore, we're right. doing this to try to prevent it. Now, the money that we have received, the $83,039, um, was that more than 60%, or have they been given out more than 60% of their funds over the years? I don't know. I think I, the, the uh, gist of the resolution that was brought up at the uh, work agenda and yeah. that was submitted as the uh, resolution that the league was requesting council, uh, probably other towns also, is that there is an impression that taking these dollars will impact the ability of the purpose uh, of the uh, fund and recycling efforts and sustainability to continue. So you don't want to jeopardize uh, the recycling programs, and they don't want to mm -hmm. have money taken or recycling off from the, uh, that type of funding. But if there's a surplus out there, you know, like if this $21 million has been sitting in the bucket for years, you know, I, 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 I guess I, I'm, I'm looking toward you guys to look into this and see why you're taking this maybe on blind faith of what the league says. I mean, yeah, I, I'm just questioning it. I heard it at the works the, at the work session. I agreed with you. Twenty one million. Wow, there goes our money again. But then in reading it, you know, there's a sixty percent limit, and we're saying, well, maybe he's taking the forty percent and moving into the general fund, which would help the taxpayers. Jim, when you say our money, that twenty one million dollars is for the overall state. Right? Agreed. Agreed. And, and I know in in previous years. When I worked in Camden, I oversaw the UEZ program. Uh, at times, the governor raided that account uh, to but to uh, balance the budget of the state. Um, so there was an impetus upon us to make sure we spend as much money as possible before they raided the account. Uh, here's an opportunity to take $21 million from a program that perhaps not a lot of municipalities utilize. We utilized over the last year, year or two, to some extent, correct? Absolutely. For yeah. you know, a recycling program, for positions in the laborers, um, and also the uh, athletes for it. Yeah, education as well. Education. So what we're basically saying is you have to apply for this money. No, 
of this money yeah. comes to yeah. us based on the amount of recycling we do. That's, that's so, okay. so, so we utilize, especially utilize it to increase our recycling, which we did with right. the, uh, the, the totes and the single stream, and decrease the amount of, of waste going into our into our garbage or into the trash. So it reduces the cost of that as well as increase the, the monies okay. coming back from that, from well, the, that, uh, the recycling fund. Well, then the money that we get, the 83000 is that based on the amount of, of tonnage we put into the... To it the is. Uh, Sorry. <coughs> it is. So we should be able to figure out what percentage we get. Uh, never mind. Uh, well, I, I, I'm just, I just, I just don't understand. Is, is, to, is to say to the governor, you know, before you touch it, there's there's programs that are in place and and, and dollars, you know, I, I understand uh, trying to balance the budget, but, you know, we want to mm -hmm. increase the usage of recycling, getting more uh, towns on board and recycling appropriately so we have less less uh, waste in our, in our trash streams and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So okay. the, the thing is to urge the governor to, you know, be careful of when you're trying to take money. I mean, we've heard it all along. They used to take money out of the pension system because the pension had a lot of money. Now the pension system is, 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 in, is in dire straits. So uh, I, I think in my mind, that's what we're saying. Hey, slow up and make sure that it's, it's appropriate. Can I comment on one thing? Sure. Basically, by, by taking money out of this this fund, this trust fund, it's really a tax. You, you're mm -hmm. increasing taxes because you're not going to you're not decreasing the cost side of the equation. Um, so to say I'm not increasing taxes and at the same time take money out of this fund is tantamount to an increase in taxes, is it not? But the thing is, is, isn't that what happens at the end of the fiscal years when one of the budget line items is lower or, you know, has gone down and you take the money from the ones that have the surplus and move it over? No, I don't think so. Okay. But here we have, we have a tipping fee, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. We have a tipping fee, we, you know, you haul your trash there, you're charged per ton. Correct, three dollars per ton. And that money is collected by the state and then is earmarked to encourage recycling efforts. Correct. Right. So how is it that government can take the money earmarked to, en to encourage recycling and say, well, we're not going to give you 63% this year, we're going to give you 62%. We're going to take that 1% and we're going to use it for something totally unrelated to what the tipping fee was designed to encourage. That's government. Well, it may be, but I think that we, I don't think we're being irresponsible if we say, you know something, don't do that. And that's what this is really doing. Okay. All right. I wish council would have done something like this when the uh, homestead rebate was pushed from February to May to August. And you guys didn't. But anyway, I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Who is that close to? Joanne Carr, Timber Birch. Uh, I have a question about the, the tonnage grant. What can it be used for? Well, we use it to, uh, correct if I'm wrong, to replace equipment. <laughs> there is a whole list of items that qualify for purchases under that program. I don't have that list with me. Mm -hmm. It can be used for what I know of. It can be used for purchase of materials for recycling, such as the containers, right. the trucks. It can also be used, I believe, uh, for solid waste tipping fees. What have we used it for? We've used it for to hire to, to uh, I believe we used it for recycling. We've also used it for recycling education. Mm -hmm. that's so, that's well, that's the commercials that we see, the education. That's part of it. Yeah, yeah okay. the outreach to the uh, community to educate them on what they should and should. But but having the plan in action for more than a year, do we do we need that ongoing um, reminder? 
I think so. I think so. I think people need to, uh, you know, you have your people that are always going to um, recycle and you have folks that are never going to and you're hoping to exactly. you continue to pull those folks. I think by the single stream uh, program we put in place uh, over a year ago, um, it showed uh, that we had a de an increase, I think, of 40% uh, of uh, recycling. So just that having a bigger container, educating the people, putting the, you know, what can go in there, what cannot go on there, all that helped in increasing, which meant we have a decrease in the amount of tonnage of our waste. Well, the fact that it's single stream, I find convenient because we are, we are able to recycle more than we were a year ago. And with less fuss, it all goes in the one, right. the one thing. But um, I think we were told at the time there's a, a, a number or something. There's a chip on the cans, and it can measure how much you use. Are we using that information for any reason, or it's just? I don't believe that has been started at this point. They had, they're getting all their equipment uh, up to date with that, mm -hmm. and then they're going to be able to start. That was also one to see how much we are recycling uh, mm -hmm. right at the curbside, and as well as uh, there was programs out there of companies that could come in and offer coupons <coughs> and, and different right. uh, sure. items, and we're trying to see if we could do that without having to pay someone to do that. That's the problem. We, we entertained, we had a meeting with Recycle Bank, right. which was used by Cherry Hill, and I'm not sure that Cherry Hill was completely happy about that program when we met with them. There was a net cost to Gloucester Township, so we did, right. not, we did not go. In so that aspect of it might might just go by the way. I mean, it has a number on it, so you can identify it. But you're not going to be measuring how much people. Well, we, by that chip, we also know that if your can is somewhere else, and when they they scan it when at the truck, they know that that can has been taken or moved. They will right. take that can back to where it belongs. Well, I don't know if I agree. I don't, it's not by the wayside. It's no. something that I believe we are going. So, so if you have a little old widow who can, can only drag the thing out once a month and only has it filled, you know, what kind of um, communication is going to occur there? What do you mean what type of communication? Well, I mean, if you're going to be weighing or measuring how much people put in to see if they are recycling, I you have one person in the house who's not, you know, doing much compared to a family who, who walks across the street and might put something in your can because there's no more room in theirs. Um, but that person who has not much, uh, an elderly uh, woman who's living alone, is not going to have as much as a family of five or six or whatever that's going to be having a lot to recycle. So I think you can do a comparison. But is Big brother going to be looking to see that there's one person in the house versus five, or that's all I was wondering. I'm mean, like, you know, and if if they don't recycle, but once a month or once every six weeks, since it's every other week, and you you don't get the thing full, will some sort of communication go out to say, why are you not recycling? Well, there is uh, processes in which if. Uh the people that pick up the trash see recyclable materials in there. They can they can label it, leave it there, let let the uh, homeowner know why it's not being okay. picked up. Uh, I know through the, our recycling uh, agreement with uh, the MUA, they can go out and also tag things and say, you know, hey, you need to recycle this. And that right. and that happens frequently. Right. The trash company will flag items and will not pick. Okay, so it won't necessarily be that your recycling can is empty. It's just that there may be recyclables in the regular trash that gets noticed. Correct. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, David Brown, Cyclerville. Uh, first off, I just want to say, Glenn, uh, last meeting I was here, you missed for your mom's funeral. I pray that she's a whole lot better off today than she was then. Hopefully one day you'll be able to see her again. Um, I had a, one question on the recycling program I had was, was the recycling program started in the fact that later on it will be able to pay for itself? The 
recycling program, uh, and, and it was started obviously before I um, took office, um, is a program in which they worked with the MUA to do, and through comparison of cost, uh, it is less expensive for the township to use the MUA to do our recycling <coughs> than if we had a commercial hauler uh, do it. And so that uh, I, continues to be the better way for our township to recycle. Not only do we recycle the typical cardboard, paper, plastics, we also recycle uh, yard waste as well as uh, brush and things like that. So um, it just it just saves us money by having them do it. Am I correct, Tom? Yeah, I don't think it, it, it's ever conceived that it's going to be a self-liquidating program. I mean, there's a cost to removal of recyclable materials. Right. The objective with the global agreement, which Glenn's referring to in the MUA, and the fact that that is one of the only DEP approved composting sites in, in this entire area. Uh, so it's not only servicing Gloucester Township, it's servicing other communities. There's other communities that are paying to take things to that to that right. facility and that, that's going to reduce our cost. So all these different things we're, we're working towards reducing the cost. I don't think you'll ever get to a point where it, it's it's cost no Okay. Now I know um, like tree limbs and all that that is mulched up. What do we do with all that? That um, is on the same property, same area, in which it then gets turned into mulch and topsoil and is sold to commercial vendors as well as uh, residents can come and purchase that as well. Uh, do we use that in the township for our buildings and all that as the mulch? That way the township's not paying for it at all. When? Or are we contracting long companies to come in and do the mulching when we can get free mulch to do it ourselves? Actually, the brush that we have, uh, that we grind, uh, goes against the cost that we use to have the uh, company come in to grind it uh, because they convert it into um, mulch and then they sell it. So what it does is it reduces the cost for them to come in and grind it for us. Yeah, see, that, that's not a, that stuff is not... I that's different. That's the grass waste, waste and the leaf waste and yard waste is what goes into the composting at the MUA. That's the MUA. The brush is public works. Okay. And so that we hire a company to grind for us, and they reduce the cost of grinding by using the product that they grind uh, to sell off as much. Oh, okay. So they give us a discount on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, my other question was on the resolution uh, 152 about the yard packer. Um, says that we're now wanting two of them. First off, what is a yard packer? Because I've packer, talked to several people and nobody knows what it is. A packer is your traditional trash truck, okay. uh, which it, uh, comes back and packs it in, right. um, and then hauls it off, and obviously it pushes it out when it's dumping it out of there. Right. Uh, so they use that uh, for leaves and trash and all kinds of stuff that they're they're picking up, and and you can use that also for recycling. Yeah, I'm, I'm just noticing this year we're buying a lot of big dollar equipment. Um, well, the Packers we had, uh, I believe, were over 10 years old. And, uh, you know, I think we got our useful life out of it. I don't think we uh, shut them down, but they would be backing up some of the equipment. So when it gets uh, maintained. Just, in, just when others go in for maintenance, we can use it for that. Right. That time. Well, and we buy equipment on a regular basis. I don't know what you're noticing right now, but if right, you go back and look at the capital program over the last 10, 20 years, you're going to see stuff. I, I can only go back two years since I've been every, here. Every year we buy stuff. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mr. Powell Dorr. <coughs> Good evening, Council. Ray Powell Dorr, Ariel. Um, most times um, we get a report from the MUA, do we not generally see that they have a surplus just about every year? Is that correct? Well, if we're talking about the audit, there's two sections to the audit. One is the solid waste, which is the recycling program. The other side is the sewage. So in order to answer your question, you have to understand how the program has been established since 1991 when we first had the the MUA handle the recyclables. There is a global agreement. That agreement is executed between the township and the MUA. 
that calls for an allocation of all costs and an audit of all costs and the receipt of all revenues associated with recycling grass, uh, the leaves, and the compost facility. So any surplus under that situation has to be returned via the audit back into the program. They're allowed, I believe, to keep a 35% retained earning amount, and that is in case we have major breakdowns of equipment or something goes on with that, with that facility because it's a major facility. If the EPA came in and said, you guys have to spend a half a million dollars to fix this problem or this is something that's safe, then that money would go towards that. So for all intents and purposes, uh, in the split of the surplus, if it's a sewage type surplus, is that something that the township can utilize to the general fund if the uh, entity were to pass that over, if the, the MUA were to allow Gloucester Township to utilize that surplus? Have we done it in the past? You're talking about a discussion that has uh, occurred here over a 10 year period at different intervals. And what you're referring to is there is a supplemental schedule in the sewage side, not the solid waste side, the sewage side of the MUA budget. It's in every MUA budget, and it indicates an amount that may be transferred to the township uh, if, if the uh, MUA so desires to, to do so. It's a very limited amount. My recollection is the last time we looked at it, it was under $100,000. It is not reflective of the entire amount of surplus that would be in their budget. Okay. Well, with the recycling, we've spoke of this in the past. The MUA, uh, we recover all township aluminum and uh, paper products and what have you. We take uh, brush and compost from other towns, which pay us to do so. Um, when you said that this would never be uh, self-sufficient, why would it not be self-sufficient with with the uh, the revenues or at least the, the monies raised with the uh, aluminum, the paper, and, uh, and compost. Again, you keep, you keep interchanging those two funds. We just talked about sewage two seconds ago, and now you're back on solid waste. I am indeed. So, so I would put to you there is no way that it will ever be self-liquidating because you don't generate enough revenues to offset the cost of operations. And that has been evidenced in time back when we went out for a private company to collect those recyclables and collect the grants. Um, it was, it was uh, much more expensive to have a private company do it than to have the MUA do it. And in looking at the costs, if you sat down and you went through the audit, which I recommend you do, if you go through that audit, you will see that the revenues just are nowhere near the expenses because you, you've got what we're talking about tonight, trash trucks, recycling trucks, little green recycling trucks. You've got sifters, you've got turners that have to be purchased for the site. These are big, heavy equipment. You've got labor pools, you've got benefits, insurance benefits. You, I mean, Ray, I don't know how you could possibly think that those revenues, if you truly went into the audit and saw what those revenues were, that they would offset the cost of operating facility. Well, then that brings me to the recycling uh, funding. And to keep it in its simplest form for maybe some that don't know, the recycling funding we're looking for the state to retain for us and the tonnage grant, are they one and the same or are they not one and the same? I'm sorry. The tonnage grant and the recycling fund, are they or are they not one and the same? Well, it's called the tonnage grant. Okay. Now with the tonnage grant... The fund, it may say that in terms of... I believe it's all referred to as tonnage grant. Okay. And with the exception of the percentage that you had mentioned, is it more or less use it or lose it? You return with the exception of that percentage, use it or lose it? No, I don't think they take the position use it or lose it. I mean, when you receive your allocation, you're permitted to reserve that allocation and to use it in future years. Okay. And I guess uh, one... It's, su it's subject to what? And my one other comment is follow-up on Joanne's comment is that uh, if we're looking to use our money wisely of, uh, of that tonnage grant, and keeping in mind that tonnage grant still is taxpayer money, are we really utilizing that in its best way by putting a commercial out after the fact? I mean, that brings me back to the movie Dave when the guy was impersonating the president and they were talking about calling people who bought a car, seeing how they liked their car. 
the commercial started out, congratulations, it's a success. It didn't seem educational, it was a pat on the back, and it just didn't seem like money well spent. What do we think? I think the state is always encouraging education and educational uh, literature with regard to recycling. I mean, I don't know what the state pays for education and recycling, but I'm sure there's a number out there that they budget themselves to, to educate the public. Well, and I happened to have called and asked if, um, if that was something that was uh, by definition uh, with the department that, that handles that. And they said, yes, you can use it for that. They just felt that it was a very unwise choice that we made here in Postal Township. It sounds like your opinion is that we've satur saturated the, the knowledge of recycling. I think by now people have got it. That, that was just my opinion. The commercial afterwards just seemed a little, we, we got it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Silent? Yes. Mrs. Strato? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mercado? 
Yes. Mr. Bean. Yes. We now have uh, ordinances of second reading, and this ordinance will have a public hearing. Ordinance 0 13 10. Ordinance fixing the compensation of officers and employees of the Township of Lawson and the County of Camden for 2013. This ordinance allows for the addition of the part time position of special law enforcement officer to the for the uh, fixing of the compensation of officers and employees. Motion, we now have a public hearing on this uh, ordinance. Seeing no hands, we close the public hearing. Motion to take off. Second. Any question? Roll call, please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Sider? Yes. Mrs. Prada? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Pinson? Yes. Before we do the resolutions of consent agenda, we are going to pool resolution 141 as um, off the uh, uh, consent agenda because it is a group. So with that, I have uh, like to have a motion for the consent agenda. Any council person wishing to remove any of these resolutions, uh, please let me know now. Motion. Senator. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Trotto? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Van King? Yes. Resolution 13 153, resolution appointing members to the Worcester Township Blackwood League Advisory Committee. This resolution appoints one of Kaczynski to the Blackwood League <coughs> Advisory Committee. Motion to adopt. So Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Strada? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Dean King? Yes. We do not have a merit report. Uh, there is no GTE Gov access uh, questions. So we'll take it to the second public portion. If you wish to speak on any subject, please raise your hand. Come to the microphone. Yes, sir. Good evening, Council. Um, uh, I was going to ask who that was. Okay. I'm going to try to remain coherent. Uh, I'm sorry, Paul DiBartolo, Ohio, Ohio Avenue, Blackwood, New Jersey. And I will I assume I will address my uh, questions to the President. And um, some of my questions are directed to Mr. Cantwell, so if you could direct them that way, I'd appreciate it. Um, I'm very concerned about this red light camera situation. And again, it's, it's not for myself. It's for the residents of Gloucester Township. I see this especially as a tax on the people of Center City Blackwood. And I've read a lot that is very disturbing to me. Um, I have never myself been, I don't want to say convicted. I've received a red light camera ticket, but it was thrown out because there was insufficient evidence. I did spend all morning in court and pretty much held to the end of the session and didn't even get a, I'm sorry. I saw a number of people lined up around the courtroom that were waiting to speak to the officer in charge of the video. So uh, there seems to be this idea that this is for safety and we're, stop, we're getting red light runners. I, I, I would, you know, I don't believe that's the case. Yes, people run red lights. Uh, I believe all the people that were in court are people who make right turns on reds and don't come to a complete stop. And when they get a ticket in the mail three weeks later, they're quite surprised because they don't know what they did. I have a number of issues that I've copied down, uh, mainly from the patch, okay, um, dating back to 2010. Chief, Chief Harkins, Deputy Police Chief Harkins, um, stated that each, pho each photograph uh, of an alleged violation was reviewed. In fact, 
the officer who reviewed my video on the day of court saw that there was no evidence i'm questioning why the contractor and then the officer looking at that could not see the same thing because this says that three hundred as of this day three hundred fifty photographs were rejected i question what's actually going on there and why the sub subcontractor and the officer could not see that now as far as engineering i i am not an engineer although i am employed as an engineer uh, for a world-class company I, I work on delicate electronic equipment I went to school as a technician I was subsequently promoted into engineering and became a senior engineer and then received Bachelor of Science in Information Technology but I do work uh, on sensitive electronic equipment and, and am paid as an engineer so when I see, when I questioned, I, I went to the light on Little Gloucester Road with a video camera. Now video cameras, home video cameras, um, capture video at 30 frames per second. So every second you have 30 views and you can pretty much look at each frame and see when something happened. Okay, and I observed the light there, yellow, at 1.89 seconds when I did it. I see here that Mr. Cantwell um, in the patch was quoted as saying it was over three seconds, I know that, it was probably closer to four seconds. I question that, especially when I read later on that he said, um, first of all it was said that one of the lights, Blackwood Clementon Road and Ariel Road, was looked at three times to average it 4.25 seconds 3.89 seconds 3.91 and then I read that he said stopwatches were used it's it, the practice frankly is to go out with a stopwatch and take a series of measurements and average them I don't know whether to laugh or cry when I read that that's ludicrous, Why is that ludicrous? because you, you have an electronic device and you're measuring it by eye with a stopwatch, and then you're. I'm sorry. You're measuring with the stopwatch to ensure it's uh, meeting the uh, terms of the, uh, the state law, and they are meeting the terms of the state law. By, by someone's sight. You, someone's. I mean, as an engineer, I hope you would know this. You're trying to tell me that somebody can't tell there's from 3.9 seconds and 1.9 seconds. That's I'm telling you that Mr. State Senator Doherty said that he came to Gloucester Township, measured speed of cars with a laser gun, and then he took video of the cameras and they were insufficient. Now, I did it as well. I'm telling you that, that a video camera at 30 frames per second, yes, is much more accurate than somebody with a stopwatch. That is very, very inaccurate. And as an engineering practice, I, it's ludicrous. Okay, I work in electronics. We don't measure anything by eye. You can't. It's impossible. Now, those traffic lights, you know, we have alarm clocks that ring every day on the same day. I'm sure those traffic lights are precise. And to get three different measurements, it's unacceptable. Excuse me? It's acceptable by the state. Well, I'm... <laughs> you know what the state does the other thing is there are 76 cameras in the state there are 25 townships that's essentially an if you if you want to average which we're doing that's three lights per township we have 10 we represent about 3% of the townships but we have close to 14% of the lights now i went down to where they are and mr mayor said that one of the reasons they were put in was safety the other is economic development traffic just flowed too quickly the corridor is not thriving that was in february 2012 i contend that the car is still not thriving but i drove from the clementon direction into blackwood i passed the first two lights they are within almost the distance of this room. They're very close to one another. There's nobody that's going to get up speed from that light 
to that light that you have to slow them down. There's nothing there for them to see. Then they pass through that light on Cherrywood Drive, and there's a long expanse. They pass what used to be the super fresh on the right. All that area is empty, and there's no traffic. There's no camera there. So if we're trying to slow people down, I'm not sure what we're, how we're doing it. Additionally, we're not where people at Little Gloucester Road are not running the red light across Blackwood Clementon Road. If anybody was running it, I could see them running a light on Blackwood Clementon Road. But we have two lights there at Little Gloucester. We're nailing people for red light turns or left turns. Same thing at Blackwood, Blackwood Clementon Road and Ariel Road. That is strictly there to nail people coming off the freeway, making a right-hand turn. We're punishing the people of Blackwood. And again, I probably have not worked in engineering as long as Mr. Cantwell, but I've been employed in the job I'm in for 30 years. And I work on electronic devices every day. And the technique we're using, and then to come out and give three different measurements. I understand why there's three different measurements, because you can't be accurate doing that. There's no way you could be accurate. That's why they're off. I would contend that those lights change at the same, they have to have timers in them. They developed timers 30 or 40 years ago, 555s. I mean, come on, please. Well, then if they have defects, they should be thrown out. Now, I'm not asking you to address that part. I was just the engineering part. Additionally, I take offense to this. First of all, ATS, the company that, that the taxpayer is paying over half a million dollars for these, these cameras, they came in. I guess somebody wanted to give the residents of Gloucester Township a warm fuzzy. And they came in and said, hey, 98% of the red light violations did not come from Gloucester Township. Of course, they didn't know the difference between Gloucester Township and Gloucester City. I believe 98% of the people getting those tickets don't come from Gloucester. And then on top of that, they went on to make a statement that Gloucester Township violators have learned their lesson. Is that what this is about, teaching us a lesson? Is that what those people think, that we're paying over half a million dollars? I take deep offense to that and add to that the insult that they didn't even know who they were talking about when they said, and we looked at it this year and now those people aren't committing the violations anymore. Yeah, those people from Gloucester never were. It's the people from Gloucester Township. You can see the numbers of who got all the tickets. And we're paying these people to teach us a lesson. It's unacceptable. I wish the council would address this issue. I wish they would meet with the people and address this issue. Because towns all over the country are getting rid of traffic lights, but cameras, but we seem to think they're a money maker. I think it's a tax. Thank you very much. I don't know if you heard the news today. The IRS has been targeting groups that use the name Patriot or Tea Party. They were harassing them. So you're telling me that that's, that's the acceptable answer that the state... I'm telling you from an engineering perspective. Now, I don't know what you do for a living, but I... No, not... I, okay. I know what I do, and I'm saying from an engineering perspective, 
looking at those lights with a stopwatch by eye is ridiculous when you're banging us over the head $85 for turning on the... If, if we're going to do our part and come to a dead stop, then the, then the township, if they want to keep this practice up, should do their part and find out how to calibrate them. If Remington and Vernick needs an engineer to tell them how to do that, I will gladly lend my... Well, they can pay my services. I guess, but to, cut, but to say that the state approved, I'm saying that if the state looked at that, I don't know who it was, and saw three different times and averaged and said, okay, we're within spec, that's an unacceptable engineering practice. But, but, but Paul, that's the state, that's the state guidelines. I don't trust the state either. Well, but we have to go by the state guidelines on what they determine how we need to calibrate these, these cameras. We're utilizing the state guidelines. Mr. Orlando uh, Mercado stated that, you know, when the state came down on people, Gloucester Township wasn't the ones that got, got picked on. Well, because we had everything in order according to state guidelines. We applied for the, the cameras based on state guidelines. Chief Smith came to us and said, hey, this is a possibility to reduce crashes at, at, uh, at these uh, red lights, at these intersections. They set the standards. We gave them the numbers. They approved it. I have a question. So my, my point is, is we're going by the guidelines handed down by the state. Okay, the state certified us. We certified the red lights. They certified us. How did the state certify what we did? Did they just look at our paperwork, or did they go out and check them also? That's that's a. a of course, they reviewed the spin. Okay, uh, again. That, that means nothing to me. I, I can already see that the practice is an unacceptable... I mean, there's a difference of opinion here. Okay, You couldn't go to work where I work and operate and call yourself an engineer and operate in that manner. It wouldn't fly. Is that your answer to the paying... I'm comfortable with what we're doing. Paul, you work for Lockheed Martin. I do. I know what I do. Your company adheres to the federal guidelines that are sent down, correct? They have people looking over our shoulders every day. Why is it acceptable for your company that you call a good company to adhere to federal guidelines, but it's not acceptable for Gloucester Township to adhere to the state guidelines? Well, uh, you're making an assumption that every federal guide, that, that you hear of scandals all the time. People getting paid off. I, mean, your I know what happened with GE. There was a problem. GE was bought out. Do you question your your bosses? Absolutely. You do. Yes. In fact, <laughs> the, 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 the highest... No, seriously, Paul. Are they getting paid off? Are they getting paid yeah. off? Are they? I mean, you're making. No, no, wait a minute. I don't know where no, it is. no. I'm, uh, my accusation is based on when I go to work each day. Okay, my order of priority is I'm going to do what I know is right. If I see a problem, I don't blow it off because my manager or somebody said, "Well, if I see that there's a problem, I'm the one who has to answer to myself for that." And, th and this is what I'm saying about this engineering practice, that we're charging people, people are paying, people are showing up in court, other people can't go because they can't take a day off from work. They're contesting these tickets. And I'm saying that the, the, the method of which they're being calibrated leaves a lot to be deserved. As an engineer, someone who's working as an engineer, you might not know that, Obviously, you don't. I know that. I don't care what the state says. That method of calibrating those red lights is insufficient. So, when I'm calibrating the red lights, where the yellow light. The yellow lights. When I'm calibrating the lights, we're at. They were checking to see that they are properly calibrated, that they're conforming to the. That they're timed line. correctly. And we're doing that. I know since a stopwatch has its limitations. But well, so does the human eye so and, and the, the timing. But I know I'm not going to get a free. Well, where did I get that then? I have no idea. Uh, do you, would you like to see the video? You could send me the video if you want, but it doesn't make a whole lot of That's sense. right, it doesn't, because you don't care.
Thank you very much. Um, I've got something else I was going to bring up, but this about stopwatch. I'm, I'm quite amazed. I didn't know that. I'm sorry? I, I'm checking it by the stopwatch. I mean, if you go to Atco Raceway and check reaction time, there's at least 0 .4, 0 .5 seconds off. So that right there, if you do both sides, that's an extra second you're adding on to it. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Cause a lot of cities are taking them out because the red lights are causing more wrecks than preventing them. But that's all I'm going to say about it. Um, uh, about a month ago, I came up here and I asked about um, our subdivision. Uh, I forget what it's called. Mulberry Station. Mulberry Station. Um, about um, our road being paved. And uh, he said it was in plan for this year, which is great. <laughs> And then I did also ask about the playground, and we were supposed to find out about it, and I was supposed to get a phone call, and it's a month later, and I've yet to get a phone call back. Have we found out anything about our playground? Because it's unsafe for kids to be there. You've got sharp metal covered by duct tape. On the, fir I, I ran the, on the first part, your development is scheduled for Microsoft, and that was part of the resolution. Right. I did briefly speak to uh, uh, Director Moffa about that, and I believe he's gone out there um, in the past, uh, past few weeks. I spoke to him after the meeting. Yeah, I, I never got a phone call back okay, letting me know anything. About that, but I did speak to Director Moffa about it. Um, let me give anything to add to that. Yes, uh, the, the, um, <clears throat> our uh, crew that we have that uh, examines the tile that went out and did put duct tape on temporarily. Uh, we're looking into there's a product that we use that does recoat the uh, metal that we are going to put on there uh, to recoat, and they did order the product for it to come in. Is, is there something other than metal we can use? Because we can already tell that metal is going to keep on having this issue. <coughs> That's how the product is made. The only other thing I can do is replace the product. And I, can, I can do that, but I would have to go into a capital uh, right. product. Right. And I, I know from uh, cities that I've been involved with, with uh, raising funds for school playgrounds and stuff like that, that uh, we did without using taxpayer money. Um, is there a way that even the township and yourself could get with the communities that have these playgrounds and maybe have a day where that community goes out and helps, works with y'all, and that could cut some savings? And that way the whole subdivision feels like it's theirs even more because they put the time and everything into it. Well, any time a community wants to do a mm -hmm. clean up or things like that, or uh, clean up graffiti on the top line, we always welcome that. And we do get calls from time to time uh, from a community group, uh, a scout group or anything that wants to go right. in and clean up a park, and we will help them. We'll provide trash cans and gloves and things like that, uh, do whatever we can do to help them pick up the trash. Uh, you know, graffiti remover, things like that. Uh, as far as anything that's technical with the uh, top lot, that's something that we uh, take care of ourselves. We want to make sure that it's safe. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I just look at it as the putting more duct tape on it still doesn't. It's only cover temporary the, until we get the product right. that we need. To I mean, cover. couldn't we put like a, something soft foam part on over that sharp thing so it won't. Go through the duct I'll tape you just put tomorrow on. Tomorrow, myself, and take a look at it and see if I can come up with another okay. alternative. All right. See if Th I can come up. Thank you a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, my next question, uh, I do appreciate y'all listening for that. I mean, I just we had a kid get hurt out there already mm -hmm. last year, so we just want to be safe out there for our kids and everything. Uh, another question I have: um, I've been looking at my Atlantic City electric bill. And I know y'all can't really answer this, but um, I saw some things on there that I'm being charged for, like uh, societal, some kind of fund to help uh, people who can't pay their electric bill pay for it. Um, I've called <coughs> trying to, I called them trying to find out when the public, board, the public, public utility board meeting is so that I could go up to it and <coughs> 
they told me to contact um, I think her name is Sharon Wolf. And uh, in the last month, I've left 12 messages for her, never got a phone call back. So I called the mayor's office because I'm just trying to find out any information so I can get up there and ask questions. I called the mayor's office. I waited a week, called the mayor's office again, and he wasn't there both times. But the second time, they they tried to give me a number. They uh, contacted me with Carol up here at the, I believe it's a state rep's office. And she got on the website. She couldn't find out any information either. And uh, can't get Sharon Wolf, who's on the Board of Public Utilities, to give us a call back. Um, why should I have to call the governor? Shouldn't my taxpayer money in this, in this area actually do something? I mean, if they're not going to do their job, fire them. Save us some money. Isn't the Board of Public Utilities? It's up in Trenton. Isn't the state uh, level? Okay. Well, I mean, I know this has been going on for 10 years, so it ain't just this governor that's been doing this. But I'm trying to figure out. If I'm paying money to help the poor people pay their electric bill, which I can honestly say I'm one of 80% of the people who live in this community that make under or 40,000 or under, and I'm pretty sure y'all's family home incomes is higher than that. Um, it's like I don't like taking government money to help me out, but why are we being forced to do something that should be voluntary? And if we're being forced to do it, shouldn't that be a tax write-off since we're doing it to help out people? Good question, and I would suggest you uh, continue your quest in getting hold of the utility company and the public utility board. Okay. Uh, I, I think Mr. Hutchinson's uh, recommendation... The, the governor's office. Governor's office. Yeah, wasn't that smart? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean... I think that that's where I would start. Uh, I would go right up there and get the I mean... I, I mean, I've called, I've called Rob Andrews several times over the last 18 months, left my phone number, poor Victor, he can't answer half my questions, and I never get a phone back, phone call back from Rob Andrews. So I'm trying to figure out, is this a northern thing? I can't get a phone call back? Well, I'm not going to say it's a New Jersey thing. But, I mean... I'm used to being able to call my congressman, get a phone call back within a day, and I sit there and talk to him on the phone. And I can't get Rob Andrews calling me back for nothing. And then calling all these offices, I can't get nobody to call me back for nothing. Um, I mean, I pay taxes. I'd, I'd expect it at least to be respected. I mean, that's just how I feel. Thank you, sir. Car, Timber Birch. Last week I was reading in the paper that the county is uh, considering auctioning off part of Lakeland Health Facility. That was the uh, Camden County Health Service Center, which okay. is the uh, psychiatric facility and the long-term care facility in Lakeland. What else does the county own down there? What other facilities? They own the they own a lot of things down there, I guess. They own the fire uh, uh, academy. They own the um, juvenile detention center. There's other buildings down there that used to be the old general hospital, which now has a lot of offices, county offices uh, down there. They own that. Uh, so there, there is a lot of, uh, of uh, things down there that they, they own. Well, I, I got kind of bothered in the fact that... Um, it seems like the county's trying to divest itself of many or most of its responsibilities. And usually when they do that, it ends up falling on Gloucester Township and the other larger towns in the county. So if they sell this health facility for $37 million, um, we're we're policing and 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 have our fire people taking care of it. We determined last month when I was up asking about it that that we're doing as a 
like a public service because we're there anyway. But now it's a private company. Is that private company going to pay taxes on that facility? Are we going to get a rateable out of it? I, I'm not sure. Uh, we can find that out for you. Um, that organization or that uh, health facility uh, is costing, I guess, the town, uh, the county, uh, in excess of fourteen million dollars, I believe, uh, of support uh, besides the money they take in from uh, insurance. It's private insurance. <laughs> So the company would be like any other company that has a business in our town that the fire and the police would be supportive of. Okay. But considering the fact that it's still a hospital, I don't, I don't know, would you expect to collect taxes since they're in Gloucester Township? Would well, it a become a rateable? But if it's a nonprofit, uh, like most hospitals are, then it's a nonprofit. But why would a private enterprise <laughs> buy? Well, Kennedy Hospital is a private hospital that doesn't pay taxes because it's a nonprofit. You know, uh, West uh, Virtua, same thing. Yeah, and the extra you know, monies they have at the end of the year, they kind of divvy up among their their employees. Well, whatever According they do, to it, rank. Fine. <laughs> According to rank, so that they don't have a profit. Well, they, they reinvest it um, most of the time back into their facilities. Healthcare facilities aren't the big money makers that you may think they yeah. are. Um, they're all um, being, uh, you know, with all the insurances issues and things like that. Uh, oh, I know. As soon as you say medical, they put a zero behind everything. But I, I, I just thought, you know, maybe this is a chance for readables and if the county is selling it for 37 mil, what are the chances of us getting a tax break from that 37 mil that they're taking? I think that's a question you, you need to ask the freeholders because uh, that would be money that they control. But, um, uh, you know, all I know is the reason is, is the cost of health care. And if you look around the state, uh, pretty much every county has gotten out of the health care business. Burlington just did it, and I believe. Uh, other northern uh, counties have already uh, divest themselves out of the county-run facilities. Okay. I'm just trying to be protective of Gloucester Township because, as I said, it seems every time the county gets rid of a responsibility they have, it seems we end up picking it up and we're paying a, a lot higher tax than we were when it was spread through the county. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, just looking out for us. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no other hands, we close the second public portion. Calling of the uh, directors and council, please. Mr. Martha. I'm not being reported this time. Mr. Lackner. I have nothing to report. Thank you. Chief <coughs> Burrell. Good evening, Council. Just wanted to brief you. Uh, thank you for the proclamation tonight for National Police Week. And it's an exciting uh, week and a half about with many activities we're going to be doing in the community and the schools, quite a few officers visiting. And the officers uh, left for the Unity Tour bicycle ride from uh, New Jersey to Washington, D.C., left on Friday and arrived safely yesterday. So I wanted to report that back to you, uh, that they are doing well and representing us in Washington, D.C. For the, for, the, uh, for the memorial on Wednesday. All right, thank you.
everybody for coming out and to also let you know that the Field of Dreams Committee is holding Gloucester Township Night at the River Sharks on Friday, May 24th. And actually $6 of every ticket sold uh, will go back to the Field of Dreams. And I will ask that um, something be put on our website if it's not there already so that you can connect to it to order tickets. Thank you. Mrs. Winters, I want to say thank you for coming out. Um, I also enjoy all the topics being discussed and the questions that are asked. And have a great night and a great week. Mr. Mercado. Thank you for coming out this evening. Uh, at the first 10 minutes of our meeting, unfortunately, we had a technical difficulty with our live stream, so we apologize to our viewers who were viewing our uh, meeting uh, this evening. Uh, congratulations to Ms. Uh, Chudzinski uh, for her appointment to Black League Advisory. Uh, this evening, we also accepted the uh, 2012 Municipal Audit. Uh, the audit's an examination of the processes that we have in place here, our procedures and our financial statements. Um, and that those finance an audit provides an assurance to the stakeholders in our community, taxpayers, our residents, uh, council members uh, that our financial house is in order. So congratulations on a clean finding. I believe it's the third or fourth year in a row. Uh, so congratulations to Tom and the CFO on a clean audit. Uh, and lastly, um, <coughs> welcome again, Ms. Winters, uh, the, the council <coughs> and uh, Mr. Carla Mayor. Congratulations. Uh, as many people who met you. There's some people who question your legal acumen. I am not one, nor are the members of council here. So uh, I've always trusted your advice in council, and uh, I'm pleased with the outcome today. Have a good evening. Mr. Bean King. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank all the residents for attending tonight's meeting. Uh, I, too, want to thank Ms. Chudzinski for uh, volunteering to be part of the Blackwood Lake uh, Committee. Mr. Uh, Siler, Councilman Siler, talked about the Memorial Day um, remembering services, and uh, if it's something you haven't attended, I would encourage you to all attend. Um, they are um, very, very moving uh, ceremonies, and we go throughout the whole town uh, with uh, wreath, uh, laying wreaths, and eventually end up at the Veterans Memorial Park, um, and they all are very, very uh, nice uh, programs to go and, and remember the people that uh, fought for us to be able to be here and, and to go back and forth and to uh, govern our, our great country. So I thank uh, Mr. Sally for bringing that up. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Trotto talked about the uh, Gloucester Township night at the uh, River Sharks. Uh, this is for the Field of Dreams, which everyone knows is going to be in our community park, uh, a field that will uh, be beneficial to uh, disadvantaged uh, people. And so uh, if you can, uh, that would be a great night to come out and support that park and uh, all the hard work that that committee has been doing um, every week and every other week meeting and um, doing a lot of great work uh, along with the, the, Rotary Club, the Rotary Club and Kiwanis Club. So with that, I uh, wish everyone a good night and ask for a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those against? Uh, council members, please stay so we can sign the. Uh